are excited because today we are talking about everything you need to know about the money you're gonna spend on your next Rolls Royce and what makes Rolls Royce cars hackable. We're gonna talk about everything from the Ghost, the Wraith, and the Dawn. Now I've owned multiple Ghosts, multiple Wraiths, and multiple Dawns, and even the latest 22 Black Badge Ghost. And so I have grown to become a very big expert from experience uh, on how to get in and out of these Rolls Royces without losing any money. I, as a matter of fact, just bought yet another Rolls Royce. This is my latest arrival for my personal collection. I have had the redon so far. This is my fourth one and uh, definitely not my favorite, but it's up there as my top two. I love the Don. I think it is one of the best top three cars of all time. Uh, as if you own one, drive one, you'll kind of realize it and you know what I'm talking about. This is spectacular. So this is a 2018 second generation Don. This is the latest arrival. We'll kind of, we don't really need a review because it's older, but nonetheless, it's amazing. I'm gonna show you the interior. Uh, a shout out to Chicago Motor Cars for hooking me up with this. This is a 2018 in a beautiful color combination with Novitec 22 inch wheels, suspension, and all the options you need. It has a white interior with obviously the blue contrast and white porcelain on the dash instead of the tiki wood that you would naturally see. Now, I'm gonna put the top down so you guys can see how beautiful this is. And then we're gonna talk about why the Dawn is so amazing and what you need to know immediately. Now, check this out. Just beautiful. You can do this while you drive too, just in case you were confused. It's stunning, it's spectacular. Absolutely love it. Look at this, beautiful. So your top goes down, now you're enjoying top-down driving in 30 seconds, which is fantastic. But look at this beautiful interior. I just want you to see this. Look at this incredible interior. Look at that dash, it's just gorgeous. And the thing that I'm, I, I would note on these, we're gonna talk about this throughout when we go to the whiteboard so you kind of understand, but there are a couple of things you need to know. The first one is the carpet will get you late. Now you may not know what that means, but this carpet is $5,000 and it will get you late. If you don't know, you'll know, but this is one of those things that, you know, when you own a Rolls Royce. So this car had roughly about 14,000 miles. Uh, it was listed for $280,000. Uh, and we'll see how I did after I've done driving it for a year or so, and we'll see if I was right or wrong, but I haven't been wrong so far on my Rolls And I absolutely adore this car as a car in general. I think it's just spectacular. Now, again, the small features of this car that you're gonna notice, you get the same umbrellas like all of the other ones, you know, like in the doors and stuff, which is cool. But in addition to that, like the Wraith, you get to close the door with a button so you don't actually have to hold your door handle, etc. So a lot of cool stuff like that that you have, and again, all of your driver assist package, night vision, everything else is also here. Super cool, super beautiful, very simple. A lot of people would say this is outdated, it's really not. This is the Gen 2, which is, has the better uh, interface. It's black instead of the uh, BMW original interface that was kind of like, uh, I guess maybe like teal or somewhat clear. If you have the black one, you have the new one, which started in 2018. New headlights started in 2017, we'll cover all that. But lots of options. This is roughly a 400K sticker. A really good sticker on a Don is gonna be anywhere from 380 to 420. Super high sticker would be 450. The only option this car is missing, which we'll talk about why that's not necessarily a deal breaker, but super cool that I wish it had are these awesome uh, premium audio speakers that it does not have. If you take a look at my new Black Badge Ghost, you'll notice it has those twirly speakers that are fantastic. And you can see here, there just has these mesh ones. If you have the mesh ones, you don't have the premium audio. So it's something to just consider. But anyways, let's go on the whiteboard uh, and let's take a look at how good are Rolls Royces today to be hacking, ready? All right, so here we are on the board. Let's examine the Ghost, the Wraith, and the Dawn and what makes them hackable, what you need to be looking for if you're trying to go for one of these three cars. Now, remember, these cars have now depreciated significantly. These were built off of the BMW platform. The new generation, which you've seen my 22, uh, Black Badge Ghost is built off of an entirely brand new Rolls Royce based system. So we expect newer stuff, especially at the price point, it starts to depreciate significantly slower than older stuff. So let's take a look here for a second what kind of ghosts they, they wear out there. Remember, these cars started in 2010. They went all the way up to 20, I think it was like 2021. 
the actual uh, body changes occurred in 2015 and then again in 2018. So this is something just important to recognize because for the majority of cars, you need to just understand that the generation of the car was basically a 10 year generation. The actual second, third generations happened in 15 and 18. So what is most hackable? Well, the short answer is anything that's basically 2016 and down, meaning older, so is going to be the most hackable. So the most hackable cars, the actual ones you want to be buying are 2011 to 2016. And let me explain why those two numbers. And it's important to note this, this is only for the ghost. So in 2011 was one year before the first year. So you never want a first year car, especially when it was very experimental for the manufacturer. So this is why we focus on the 11. 2016 is going to be the least expensive of the best version of the second gen. So why do I say that? Because the 17 had the updated uh, nav system and then in 18 they redid the bumpers. The 18s look significantly better but at the price point there's just so much room for them to still come down. So this is so important. These are going to be the ranges. If you're in the higher range of dollars you're going to be here and where do the dollars start? Well simply put if we were going to be looking at the top 2016 what do you want to be paying at its highest form? you're gonna be looking at 170K retail. If you're talking about the 2011 at its lowest form in wholesale, you're gonna be looking at 90K. Significant differences, remember that the 2015, meaning right in that middle ground when the second generation came to be, right there you're gonna be paying roughly, here, let me just take this, sorry, about 150K. So there's a couple of things to note here. Either you're gonna be looking for a car basically that's gonna be right here around this range. There's only two ranges where you're gonna play in. You're either gonna play in this range or you're gonna play in this range. This is very important to understand that this is why hacking is such a critical and mathematical game. It is not just, hey, I'm gonna tell you what to buy and you're just gonna buy it and drive it. It doesn't work that way. Here in this lowest point, you have 90K, the majority of clean cars are gonna be about 100, 105, and then the majority of better like 2012, 2013 is going to be about 115. Again, that 10K gap, right? 10K rule of exposure, 10%. Now here, let's take a look at the same thing. Again, 150 is the bottom, 170 is the top. You're talking about 155 to 165, 10K right in between again when you're buying in that scope here and we're buying in the scope here. The reason, the reason it's important to understand we don't buy in these areas is because the lowest of wholesale cars are going to be the ones with the most issues. The ones at the highest retail are the cleanest and nicest, but obviously we're not consumers, we're hackers. So you're obviously never going to find the lowest of the lowest rips that is clean, beautiful, and everything else because everyone else is trying to buy them too, and options matter. If you're looking for a ghost, some of the things you'll have to be very much keeping in mind for resale value. Driver assist three, rear seat, immersive and then rear entertainment with the tray tables. So these are options that you're going to want and then of course color and spec matters. So you're going to look for cars that are more neutral with t try to avoid tan interiors, try to stick to black interiors. Black interiors are going to do significantly better than white or cream over time. So if you're looking for white on black or you're even looking for maybe a, a more bright color, then go with something along the lines of a blue with black, but try to stay away from any color that involves uh, like white, especially as the cars are older, unless you're going for second gens. On the interiors, they're gonna show significant wear. You're gonna have to constantly worry about die seats and things like that you don't wanna do. So try to stick to black interiors, especially if you're going on older Ghost. This is what you need to know if you're going for a Ghost. This is an easy in and out, three to 5,000 miles uh, a year. You can buy the car with as high as 25 to 30K miles, regardless of which generation you pick. These are okay, they get driven. You just wanna get out of it before it hits 38. So that's really your range or highest amount of mileage you can basically get away with. This is what you need to know about the Ghost. Now let's take a look at the Wraith. Similar kind of situation, started in 2014. Uh, was discontinued in America in like 2021. I think there were a few 2022 models that lurked around. The majority of them were 21. Uh, the generational shift uh, on this particular car happened in 2017. 
So you have your generation two in 2017, and that went all the way up to 2021. Now the Wraith has significant uh, differences from the Ghost, lots of special editions each and every year, starting 2016, 2017, 18, 19, all the way up to 21, a special edition was made. In 2016, it was fashion uh, and music. In 17, it was luminaire. In 18, it was, what the fuck was 18? Uh, Atomus. And then it keeps going. I think in 19, no, 19 was Atomus. I don't remember what 18 was. Anyways, so you have all of these different like special editions each year. Remember, those are gonna bring roughly 50,000 over whatever you're paying for a comparable car without the special edition. So just remember that from a dollar standpoint. If you would pay roughly about 220 full retail on a special edition of the same car, same mileage, is gonna be roughly 270. So which car should you be buying? Historically, I avoid the 14 and 15 Wraiths and I try to focus, unless I'm looking for a bargain, I try to focus primarily on the late 15s all the way up to 17. And I'm gonna show you how I look at this graph. Basically, we start here, 2014 being at the very edge here. Now, 2014s have been as low as 150. And again, big things such as Starlight and things like that matter. I'm gonna write it here so you know. So Starlight, driver three, floor mats. Now, floor mats, you might be like, why does floor mats matter? There's a $5,000 floor mat option where when your girl takes out her shoes, you're gonna find out why you're about to get laid when she touches the floor mat. So trust me, pay the five Gs. It. Yeah, thank you, Reggie, for additional comments that were unnecessary again. I don't even know why we work together. I wonder sometimes. Anyways, back to this thing. Starlight, floor mats, uh, and driver three, super important. So 150K bottom. If you're talking about the latest, greatest Wraith, this is going to probably shock you. You ready for that? 400K. Look at this gap. Obviously, we're not playing in this gap. A lot of these newer cars are not hackable. So let's focus our efforts on the core of the beginning of this. The majority of good uh, Wraiths are gonna be right here around 170 and really clean, nice black badge 18s are even gonna go for around 220K. This is where you're basically playing. This is the core of where you're playing, but there are just a lot of variances for the cars. In my opinion, if we're going to mix the best driving experience with absolutely one of the best opportunities, it's gonna be on specifically on the 2018 black badge Wraith right between two and 220. Now, there are gonna be opportunities where you can play in the Wraith between 150 and 180. Right here is gonna be a great opportunity to play, or you're gonna play right here between 200 and 220. So whichever one you look at, these are where you're gonna play. Now, you may be wondering, what does that mean? Well, let's cover this for a second. Remember, we're looking for 10,000 or 10%. 10,000 right here, is your bargain more easy to adopt hack between 170, 180, 2014, 2015, uh, Rafe Starlight, fully loaded, low mileage. You wanna buy a car with around 20,000 and sell it before 35. So this is like that range of mileage you can look at. But let's say here, if you wanted a bargain car, you were on a budget, you wanted to guarantee a better hack, very low exposure, you would buy an older car between 170, 180K, super clean. Or you have more money, you want a statement piece, but you still wanna be conscious of your money, less than a 10% exposure rate here for 18 black badge Wraith fully loaded, or if you can find some kind of special edition lurking somewhere that makes sense. I would prefer, just so you know, to have a black badge 18 than a special edition 16 that's not a black badge and that also doesn't have the updated infotainment and everything. Remember, in 18, uh, late 17, early 18 was when they started introducing the new infotainment, the new headlights and everything else. So this is something you gotta consider if you're going for the Wraith. And next and last and my absolute favorite, the Dawn. Okay, so the Dawn started in 2016 uh, and it had an immediate facelift in 2017 and then that carried uh, to another facelift in 2020, I wanna say. Uh, which were very minor with the headlights and things like that. And I think this went all the way up to 22 for some special editions as well. So again, here you have 2016, 2017, 16s are great. The difference between all these cars, just so you understand, is this body started in 11, all this testing and everything happened. Then they started here. Again, then they only had one year with a 
basic Gen 1 thing going on here because they recycled a lot of parts for the Wraith. The only notable differences between the 16 and 17s are going to be the headlights. They're, they're significantly different for just they're dotted. Like if you look at the headlight shape like this, this is the one in the uh, 17 and this is the one in the 16 for the LED. Basically, it looks like that. There isn't much of a difference in terms of cars unless you're going to 18. So I would highly recommend uh, either going for like a 16 or an 18. The headlights don't matter as much. They're not that big of a deal. So nonetheless, 16s can be bought very, very, very good. So there are special editions for these each and every year. But let's take a look at our graph here with the highest of Dawn still selling in the 420s and the lowest of Dawn's now in today's market selling about 190 for a, a clean car. Now there's no starlight option on Dawn because you have a convertible top, but these cars again, uh, usually cleaner in nature, like meaning clean and well put together Dawn's are selling around 220K for 16, 17s. And the majority of 18s are gonna be right starting at 250 and they're gonna carry for the most part to 300. So there, there's a couple of opportunities here because we have to understand that 18, 19, and 20 aren't necessarily coupled together. So the, the sweet spots on the Dawn are basically right around the 220K mark or for a newer secondary edition, right around the 275K mark. Now, someone may argue, well, wait a minute, I've seen a wholesale much cheaper than that. Remember, we are not a wholesale group. We do not teach people how to buy wholesale and sell read. That's not what we teach. If you don't understand what car hacking is, go in the description. Again, click the 90 day, that 90 uh, minute free training and learn what car hacking is. If you still want to learn how to basically make good financial decisions around exotics or luxury cars, click the link below that and join Exotic Car Hacks and learn. The main argument here is that the real sweet spots on these cars to drive and have a great experience, white ownership without losing your ass, is going to be either a first generation at 220 or a second generation at 275. Now, here's why. When you buy a car at like 190 at 2, you're going to get a car that needs stuff. And you're better off getting a cleaner car that doesn't need stuff, that has lower miles and is prettier at 220 than buying one at 195 because you stole it and then spending 30 grand and bringing you back in at 220 but having more miles and an older crappier car. That is key, so remember that. Then 275 is because once you go into that 18 and up, you're no longer going into bargain territory, instead you're going into I want territory. So this is I can afford, just like I showed you earlier, and this is I want. These are very different psychological things when it comes to reselling a car. So this is the same thing we're looking at here. Again, I can afford, I want. I can afford, I want. These are two generational shifts in the types of cars. Now, if you're getting a Dawn, you need the floor mats. You need driver three. These are kind of like not optional, right? And you wanna try to find a really hot color combo. Like in my Dawn, you saw I have the porcelain interior uh, with the blue, it's something exciting, it's different. Try to stick to colors that, that, that will work or special editions that are exciting. Remember, Bitcoin money is dead, so we're not talking about 19, 25 year olds coming and buying these cars. We're talking about the average group being somewhere around the you know, 40, 50 years old range. In addition to that, I would tell you, Mandarin interior on any rolls will always bring a significant premium than anything else. Mandarin. So remember that, that's the orange interior. Uh, and it's super, 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 super good. So try to try to really, really uh, pay attention to that because it matters. And one other thing you wanna try to get with Don, but it's not necessary, it's just something that's really good in options, premium audio. It just makes a great difference for the experience and it's fantastic. So this is basically what I would look at if I was looking at a Ghost, a Wraith, a Dawn, and how I make my decisions around which cars to hack and which not. So you have a really good view here of everything you need to know about the world of Rolls Royce, and hopefully you've enjoyed this buyer guide. And of course, you've seen what the new generation of Rolls Royce looks like. I'll be getting my Spectre in a couple of months as well. So we have the four door, the two door, and then the Dawn will be replaced by whatever it'll be called. But it's an exciting time for Rolls Royce as their new line is beautiful, and will be interesting to see how this will shift over time. But you have it here, you saw it first, right here on Exotic Car Hacks, and I'll catch you next time with another video.